to the waters. Hey, we're so glad you decided to join us here this weekend. Whether you're watching online or you're here in person, yeah. we just want to say thanks so much for being a part of the service. If you are here in person, on the seat back in front of you, there's a connect card that you can grab and fill out. If it's your first time, you can bring that to the Drip, our coffee shop, and you and your whole family can have a free drink on us. Just our way of saying thanks so much for coming. I know it's it's a, it's pretty special. So there's smoothies, frappes, lattes. Yes. You gotta good, check it out. Yeah, there's also prayer requests, um, different things like that, ways to get connected and involved mm -hmm. if you want to get plugged in. Yeah, and hey, if, to stay up to date on everything that we have going on here at The Waters, check out our bulletin card that we have on every single seat. This has upcoming events. You can scan it to learn more and stay up to date with everything going on here at The Waters. Yeah, why don't you check out these other announcements that are coming up here at The Waters this week. Ladies, it's time to launch your dreams and awaken what you carry for the kingdom. We are so excited our Dream in Color event that is happening on October 15th at 6 p.m. This is for high school ladies and up. We have an amazing speaker, Liz Martin, who is coming to share, and we are just believing for an amazing night with an extended time of worship and an epic refuge after party that you are not going to want to miss. We hope to see you there. Some stalling, eggnog, gin and tonic made, yuletide gay and jolly. Same procedure every year, I just can't get enough. I drink till Rudolph reappears, I toast to him that red nose dear. Jingle them bells and frolic, it's the best. Baptism weekend is coming up October. October 28th and 29th. You were the word at the beginning. One with God. Stand with us as we worship today. We know that God is still moving today. Jesus said when you left this earth that I won't leave you as orphans, but I'll give to you my spirit, which will empower us to live a life that is worthy of the cause so that someday we can face the Lord and say, Jesus, this is my life, take it. And he'll say, well done. So let's sing this today. Would you put your hands together?
Just like in days of old, Father, some of us here need a champion. And Father, we know you walk with us. Would we see it in our lives? Would we see your power move here among us? I tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it You take the broken Raise him to glory. Come on, you are. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say. 
lift. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority, not my power, but yours, that Jesus has given me.
generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land and all who gone before us and all who will believe we sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above the all all thoughts and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above the all and the angels cry holy all creations cry Father, we thank you for your holy name that stands above all names. God, and we come in a spot of surrender, Father, this morning 
to lay down all of our ways, God, before you and say, God, would you take me? God, your word talks about how you say, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take on my yoke and my burdens, for they are light. Jesus, your name desires to carry the hardest things that we are walking through. And so today, Father, we come in a spot, God, to give it over to you and say thank you, Father, and give you praise that you are good and that we have life because of what you did for us on the cross. Lord, we thank you so much this morning. We continue in a spot of prayer this morning and we pray for our ministry focus. We pray for our men's ministry. Father, we pray for John Morris who leads that ministry. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon him. God, that you would guide him and direct him. Father, God, that you would continue to speak truth over him. Father, we pray that you continue to raise up men here at the waters, God, who love and serve you, who lead their families, God, who lead, God, different spots, God, in, in this community, Lord. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon them, guiding them and directing them. Father, we pray over the wings and worship event happening. Father, we pray, God, that it would challenge men to go to a new level in their faith, God, that men from the community would come to be a part of it because, God, they want to experience you. Father, we thank you, God, for our missions focus, for our missionaries, John and Jen Dollinger in Costa Rica. Father, we pray that your hand would be upon them today. God, that you'd lift them up, you'd encourage them, you'd strengthen them. Father, that you'd use them to have an impact, God, in Costa Rica. We pray you bring leaders and pastors alongside them to impact that nation. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for John and Jen. And lastly, Father, we pray right here locally. We pray for Messiah Lutheran Church and Pastor Justin. We pray, God, that you'd be speaking truth over him. God, that you'd guide him and direct him, give him vision. Father, we pray as they have their services this morning, would you bring new people from this area, God, to their church. God, and impact their hearts, God, at Messiah Lutheran. We pray for every church here in the community, God, that's helping lead people closer to you. We pray that your hand would be upon them, that you'd be blessing them. God, that you'd bring new people, God, and more and more believers would come in this area because of the churches standing up to point people closer to you, Jesus. And we pray right in this place this morning, Father, whether we're here in person or watching online, Father, we pray that you would touch our hearts that your presence is here and wanting to meet with us. And Father, we would not leave this place without a touch of you, Lord. Let us stay in your presence and hear of you. Would you speak through Pastor Doug and minister to our hearts this morning, Father? We thank you so much for who you are. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome this morning to the Waters Church. We are so glad that you are with us. Would you shake the person's hand next to you and greet them, say hello. If you are in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, we have a special service just for you. 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, you guys can head out those doors. We have a special service for you. We're so glad that you are with us this morning. Welcome to the Waters Church. We are so glad that you've decided to join us for service today. In the seat back in front of you, we have Connect Cards. Make sure to take it, fill it out. If you're new here, bring it back to the drip. We want to give you and your whole family a free drink just as a way of saying thank you for joining us for service today. And even if you're not new, fill it out, drop it in the offering basket. We want to know how we can pray with you or if we can get you connected. So make sure to do that. In the lobby, we have some bulletins available for you. These are great ways to stay up to date with some of the big events that are happening here at the Waters Church. Speaking of which, Walk Through Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> we need your help to put it on. We have auditions on October 8th at 2 p.m. here at the Waters Church for all different cast members. Grinches, Cindy Lou Who's, narrators on the way. Grinches. <laughs> yes, yes, Grinches. And we're so excited. It's, it really does take a whole village to put this production on. Literally a whole who village. Nice. We have a refuge event coming up for all ladies high school and up. Good morning, everybody. Hey, nothing to see here. 
I, you know what's funny? I didn't even notice because my internet's so bad at home. That's how we watch TV. <laughs> so like, I just fill in the gaps. It's like our own entertainment. But I think they were talking about, let me look at the list here. It was refuges coming up. Ladies, you don't want to miss that. And uh, I'll just tell you, guys, at the end of the month, we have uh, an event that we've never done, and it's called Wings and Worship. We've never had a guy's service here. It's been on my heart and a bunch of our guy leaders. Uh, and uh, so October 27th on a Friday night, we are going to have our very first service. We have a special speaker a time of worship, and so again, mark your calendars for that at the end of the month. Uh, I just can't wait for that. So hey, I'm jumping right into my sermon, and uh, I'm pretty excited actually to be able to share this. We've been in a series uh, that we started uh, mid-August, and we've been going through, and it's called Let's Go. And really what it is about let's go deeper in our faith, let's go deeper in our walk with the Lord. Let's let our faith impact us in the way that we live and the way that we respond to the world all around us. And so that really sums up kind of where we've been going. And so uh, I added in a message. This weekend was not planned to be in here. Um, and so this is, a, this is a message that I added in. I did say next week, last week I let the cat out of the bag, next week is let's go, let's go. And uh, so anyways, I said that last week in my message, and that is not just a, a repeat, that's not just too, ca- too much caffeine in my system. We're going to be talking about the end times and our blessed hope that we get to go be t- in heaven forever and ever. I can't think of much better to talk about. So anyways, uh, that's next week, and so this week I added in a message that I, I uh, just worked on on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday, and so it's literally like, this is like bursting from my heart. I had the opportunity uh, to go away to a prayer and fasting retreat. I left last Sunday afternoon, and I uh, was there until Wednesday afternoon, and a lot of our team uh, came up and were there for uh, either all of it or part of it, but uh, it was just a, a time where I kind of went wide open, like, God, what do you want me to add? So this is literally right, um, right off of my heart straight to you today, and, and when that happens, I want to let you know that normally the person that God is trying to speak to the loudest is me, all right? So I'm not preaching just to you. I'm preaching to me, and I know that it applies to people in this place, and so next week, let's go, let's go. This week is let's Let's go, let's slow. I was really proud of that. If it took me all week just to come up with a title, I was like, that is just so cool. So I just want to bask in it for a moment. Let's go, let's slow. Because I'll tell you this, if, if you want to win the race, you got to continue. Slow and steady wins the race. We got to keep moving forward. We got to keep doing what God's called us to do. And how do we accomplish the things that God has for us? I literally believe, again, I preached last weekend about the upside down kingdom. Everything's different in the kingdom of God versus culture. And if we want to move faster, honestly, we need to move slower, and we need to move steady, and we need to continue to be moving forward. And so what do I mean by that? We all get carried away by the busyness of life. Life is just busy. And when I talk to families, when I talk to anyone of any age category, I feel like like we're busier than ever. And I know that people have been busy like forever, but I also know that it just seems like there's a new level of busy that is like normal, right? And we got to run here and run there. And, And I know that when you're raising and kids, there's always those dynamics that come with that of a level of busyness that's just with raising kids. So again, that hasn't changed, but it's unbelievable just the running that people do and the things that they have and the busyness in their life. And I want to talk a little bit uh, about that today. There's a couple of principles that I want to just tell you about busyness. And the first one is there will always be work that needs to be done. There will always be work that needs to be done. Like, it's never, ever done. And I know that that's kind of depressing to hear, right? But for me, I struggle the most when I feel like life in my calendar is pushing me. And I have no margin. I can't do anything. I can't figure out where to squeeze anything in, fit anything more. And I just feel like capacity. That doesn't bring the greatest out of me. That doesn't bring joy, right? And sometimes I just have this reset where it's like, I got to get behind this. And I got to take control of this a little bit uh, in, in our lives. But there's a reality that there will always be work that needs to be done. And the second part of it is this. Another reality is this. It'll never, ever be done. It'll never be done. There's always more, okay? So how many of you in this place, do you live off a to-do list? Anybody to-do list people in here? Oh, man, a majority, right? My brain is a to-do list, okay? Like, I'm always thinking, and like, blah, 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 blah. And lots of times, even during worship, I'll be like, ooh, I'll put a to-do list, like something on there. Because if I don't put it in a task in my phone, G-Tasks is my brain. And if I don't put it in there right away, there's a good chance 
chance it's not gonna get done, all right? Or I'm gonna forget, because I'll be on to the next thing. And so I live, and one of the things that I've realized is I've never not had a to-do list, ever. And just when I think I'm really doing good with life and I've got it down to like two, then I think of three more things that I need to add to the list. So again, anybody that does lists, you know that. That's the way that it works. Or something breaks, and all of a sudden I gotta fix this. And so the reality is this, is there's always work that needs to be done, and it's never, ever done. We can work all day, we can work all week, and there's still more to do. And what I love is scripture. A couple thousand years ago, a story that I want to share today, near and dear to my heart, uh, it speaks to us today, and it's the story of Mary and Martha. And I'm kind of excited, because even when I read that on Wednesday and, and kind of went into this, it was like God just had a few new things jump off the paper uh, to me that I'm excited to share. So Luke chapter 10 is our text today, starting with verse 38, and it says this. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha had opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and she asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would enlighten some words from your message this morning from this text. I pray, God, that it would touch our hearts. I pray that it would draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there's three things that I want to hit out of this passage today. Number one, Martha was distracted. Number two, Martha was crusty. And number three, Martha was missing out. All right? So let's dive in. Number one, Martha was distracted. You're like, Pastor Doug, how did you come up with such a brilliant first point? Well, it's found in the first verse. Luke chapter 10, verse 40. But Martha was distracted. All right? That's, I'm just being honest. That's where I got it from. Okay? So Martha was distracted. And it says it right here in the story. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. It's that I don't know how many of you love to throw a party. We love to throw a party. We always have. It's nothing new. When Peg and I got married a number of years ago, uh, in, uh, we got married on October 8th, and literally the end of that month, we had uh, our very first all-house party with all of our college friends and everything. We had a Halloween party, a costume party, and got together. We love parties. When our first uh, daughter, Abby, was born, at her one-year birthday, we had a party of all parties. We had over 70 people that came to this party to watch her eat into the chocolate cake and do all that stuff. We love parties. We love feeding people. We enjoy and have life in this, and it hasn't changed. We, 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 we thoroughly enjoy any good reason for a party. But also, parties stress people out, and they don't always bring the best out of people. If you've ever had a grad party, if you've ever had some sort of party or open house at your house, it's like you fix everything that's broken, right? You put everything together. You clean like that's how you really live, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, like you're just so fake. Oh, you're just so fake. You know what I mean? This is just how perfect our life always is, you know what I mean? But anyways, that's just me, I guess. But anyway, so we work hard. We do all this stuff. But also, when you have a party, man, there's a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to do it, and there's a great benefit in it, but, but the reality is it takes a, a, a ton of work. And uh, so here's the scene that we have in this story of Mary and Martha. The they in this is, is, is that it was Jesus and his disciples. There were probably some other followers that were with him, some other disciples that weren't just the 12. And so there was a, a group of people. So at minimum, it, it was, you know, probably 15 people plus Mary and Martha. And so, I mean, a party and dinner for 17 people, but it's also assumed that it could have been a much larger group because if you follow through scripture, this is right after Jesus had sent out 72 of his disciples out and he sent them out two by two to be able to spread the message and they came back to report to him. And so it could have been a number of them in there as well. So this group could have been literally anywhere a party from 17 all the way up to probably 90, all right? So this is a big group and so whatever it is, this, there was a lot. And, and in their culture, the Bible just says this, Martha opened her home. Now, opening your home doesn't just mean dinner. Like nowadays, like if you have someone for dinner, you have them for dinner, and then they leave, and they go home to their own bed. Now, they were in hotels, people traveled, all of these things back in that day. So culturally, to open your home was a whole lot more than just feeding someone. It was honoring your guest. It was, it was, it was treating them in a certain way, and even it included meals and lodging. So this was more than just like, hey, I had Jesus over for dinner. Can you imagine how you'd clean your house if Jesus 
Jesus was coming over for dinner. <laughs> I'd be like, man, it just no matter what you did, it wouldn't be clean enough. Okay, so anyways, Jesus was coming over for dinner with a whole bunch of these disciples, and she is working, and Martha is busy, all right? So I want you to think of holidays. I want you to think about this, and we are not gonna do a show of hands. We're not gonna point at people that we're sitting next to, because it probably is somebody that you're sitting next to, but some of you probably have a sibling a sibling that when you do any big party or family event, they don't know how to work. They don't know. They, they think the party just magically happens. Magically happens. You know what I mean? You're there for the holidays. It's Thanksgiving dinner. And I told you not to look, you guys. Nobody can make eye contact, right? We, don't, we want unity, not like war. But I mean, the reality is like everybody comes and it's like, and, and, and there's always that person that they're just going to sit and either watch football or they're going to do this they, or visit or they don't understand that, you know what, like this meal took like an absolute lot. And you know, I don't know if you noticed this, but the rest of the family all brought something with them, you know what I mean, and contributed to the whole meal, and I'm not saying you have to do that, but it would be nice, you know what I'm saying? And like, all of us have that, that person, right, and they just come, and then all of a sudden, dinner's ready, and you get out, or dinner's ready, you eat, and then when it's done, like, you go, and people start doing dishes, and they start putting them away, and that person is just oblivious what that, what that glowing box is under the sink that just, you put dishes in, and it comes out clean. Like, I don't know how, how that worked. Like, you have that person in your family, and I just always have to say this, and if you don't have someone specifically in your mind right now, the truth is it's probably you, okay? I mean, it's just you, because you are that clueless. You're like, I didn't even notice. Like, I just love turkey, man, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so anyways, but that's like, I think there were some issues here going on between Mary and Martha, and it didn't just start in this story. I think that it was immediately a little bit of their personality. I know that we're all like born different. We have different talents. We have different skill sets. I get that. I'm an acts of service guy when it comes to the five love languages, so I love to do things. I love to, you know, all that stuff, and so I get it, that, that, that we're wired differently, but I think that there was a little sister drama that was going on through this whole thing, and Mary was just so excited to be with Jesus. Like, she was just so excited that he was there, and Martha was consumed, the scripture says, with all that needed to be done. And listen, I wanna tell you this, that hosting Jesus was a really good thing. It was a good thing, like, it was good. I mean, I'm sure that they were like, that was a great meal, we appreciate your hospitality, we sure do, you know, thank you for what you've done, it was good. But interestingly enough, Jesus was gonna say, but what Mary did, which was nothing, right, was great. And can I just tell you that one of the biggest robbers of great is good? Because we can get so busy doing good that we miss out on the great. We miss out on, on really what God has for us. I want to be practical with you that, that every yes that you say in your life comes with a no. Everything you say yes to. And so if, you're, if you're, it's always yes, you've you got to count the cost because there is a no that is involved. And, and we need to be careful. We need to guard that. And so a, a, as we do this, too much good can actually keep us from what is great because more than anything, more than anything in our world, Jesus wants to be connected with us. I preach probably, this is one of the top three verses that I preach from the most is in John 15. And you hear me talk about it all the time. Because Jesus wants regular connection with us. And I tell you, I'm telling you, I don't, I, I don't preach this because I have it figured out. I preach it because I'm trying to figure it out. All right? So listen, this is what it says. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I probably read that the most, preach that the most, uh, because I struggle to abide. I struggle in that area. It's a continual fight to fight for what is the most important and not let the good take away from the great. Because what this is right here, what Jesus was talking about, remaining and abiding in him, that's what's great. And I can sell out the great for the good all of the time. There's so much good that needs to be done. There's so much need. There's so many people that need help. There's so many good things to be able to do that we can literally give up on the great. Thinking about it, I use this example every time. It's like a cell phone because every single one of us has it. Every single one of us, is, you know, it's available to us and that's a cell phone. And when I think of abiding, if that cell phone is not charged up, it's worthless. 
It's worthless. It might have a monetary value that you can sell it for, but at that moment in what you need to stay connected, to transfer money, to be able to check a location, to be able to take a picture, to be able to have a GPS to know, to call home to somebody, like without being charged up, it is worthless. And, and I'm telling you this, when, when people feel worthless, that doesn't bring the best out of them when, they, when, they're, when they're struggling with those insecurities. And I'll tell you what else doesn't bring the best out of people is when you're tired, right? And so that actually becomes an excuse, right? So like when our kids are sassy, right? Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, they're just tired. They didn't get a nap, right? Well, and then you, some of you are like, well, they should just sleep all the time because they're always like that. You know what I mean? Like, okay, that's great. But I mean, like, and it, and it, and it comes up to us as adults, right? Like we snap, we, we say something we shouldn't, we, we don't. And, and when I say we, I, I mean me, I'm in there, right? Tired does not bring the best of us out, And we say something, and then we have to apologize, and we say, you know what, I was just exhausted, I was tired, I'm sorry that I did that, right? So what I'm saying is is that exhaustion and feeling like you're not hitting the mark, not abiding, actually it, it affects us, which leads me to point number two, and that is that Martha was crusty, all right? Listen to this, if we read this again, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. All right? Now, I, I don't know how many of you, how many of you use version? Do you guys ever listen to, use version, listen to it, okay? Like the Bible app, I, I absolutely love it, and I, I enjoy listening, and uh, I love listening and reading along. And uh, for a long time, I listened to the NIV, because that's the Bible that I preach from, that's the one that I knew, and so uh, I didn't even know that there were different voices on the Bible app. And so I listened to NIV, and I gotta be honest with you, like listening to the guy speak in the NIV is like listening to Silence of the Lambs. Like, I mean, it's like freaky. The guy, his, just listen to it, if you don't believe me, listen to it, and look at this text. He'd be like, but Martha was distracted by the preparations that had been made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care, my sister? Like, you read him, he's just freaky, and then I found the NLT, I'm like, okay, that guy's nice, I can listen to him, and then just recently, since July, I've been listening to everything again through the message, and that guy's the nicest, like, I mean, he just makes you feel, like, amazing, so, anyways, but I I wanted to, you're like, what are you talking about, Doug? All right, I wanted to come up with my own version, and I just need to find a little time to record the entire Bible in this, but... uh, so we'll see, but I'm gonna just test run this today, and uh, it's my Valley Girl version. And the reason why I wanna do a Valley Girl version is I think that it will help you understand a little bit of the wine that was at the meal, all right? So anyways, <laughs> but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made, and she came to him and she asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me, <laughs> tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things. And I was like, duh, right? (laughs) Here it is, all right? If I just could find time to read the entire Bible. (laughs) The reason why I wanted to say that is you guys can all hear somebody talking like that. I'm like, when you look at this, I'm like, girl, you were like so full of wine, it was dripping out of your voice. Like it it was pathetic listening to her. She literally was a tattletale and came to Jesus and she was like, I'm doing all the work, all the work, everything. You wouldn't even eat right now if it wasn't for me. I'm doing it all. Tell my sister to help me. Like, what a tattletale. Like, honestly, you know what I mean? So, like, again, you, you read all this and, and, and it's like, what's amazing is, is when we become crusty, our hearts can turn from our intentions being very good uh, to we can turn into a victim mentality very easily. And I just want to say, every one of us is susceptible to it. Every one of us can hit a point where it's just like, am I the only one willing to do this? Am I the only one that even sees what needs to be done? Am I the only one that, that could even do this? Does anyone else have a pulse? Does anyone else have a brain? You know, And we start to get crusty, and it hits us, and it happens, and it's real, and we see that that is happening, and the truth is Martha got crusty. She got crusty. Now, I understand she was the only one working. I understand that it was actually true that Mary was doing absolutely nothing. But here's a question. I said there's probably issues that they had growing up. This probably wasn't the first time. This probably was something even in their personalities. But the question in the heart question that we ask ourselves is this. 
why is it sometimes okay and other times it makes me really mad? And the truth is, the difference is not the situation, it's my attitude. And when I get a little bit of crusty, then I got a little bit of a victim mentality. When I'm not crusty, when I abide, when I'm full, when I'm not distracted, then I can kind of take it with stride and realize that oh, it's just who they are. You know what I mean? And, and I'm just serving because I want to serve. It's interesting, I've talked a, a, a lot through the years uh, uh, about attitudes. I've talked a lot through the years about the five love languages. Uh, when we got married, and I love sharing this because uh, I, I think it hits wherever people are at. I was an acts of service guy, still am. I don't like to sit very long, and if I sit, it's like a discipline. Like, okay, I'm gonna sit down on the couch, and I'm gonna watch this show, and then I fall asleep in eight minutes. Okay, so anyways, but that's quality time, because Peg's is quality time, and we try to work together. Mine is acts of service, like do something. So I can, I can, I can sit for just a little bit, but then it's like, mm, that's enough, and then I gotta go like do some dishes, or I gotta like do whatever. I grab laundry, all this stuff, and it's just like, I don't know, I'm so sick and demented. I don't know why, but I, 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 you know, it, it started when we were first married, and I didn't understand any of this stuff. And again, I've shared this stuff before, but again, it just, it hits all the time. So I, I remember that she would come home, and, and if I was home, I would like have some dinner ready. I don't want to make it sound really great. It was probably mac and cheese or ramen noodles with cut up hot dogs, which is fantastic, by the way. But anyways, I'm just saying. So I mean, it wasn't like it was great, but I'd have some food ready, right? And maybe I had like made the bed and cleaned up and like started some laundry and folded some laundry. And I was like, you know, I'm the guy that when she came home, I was like, <laughs> you notice anything? <laughs> Look at over there, you know, laundry basket, done, clean, you know, and all this stuff. I mean, that's where I was. I was like, so I was like super proud of myself and it would go good and, and, and she would come home and I'd be like, girl, you just sit down. We're just gonna, you know, I'm gonna bring you dinner in just a few minutes and then all of a sudden I'd finish up dinner. I'd bring her dinner and then all of a sudden I would like finish dinner and then I would go to put it away and, and then I was in the, the kitchen and I was putting stuff and washing and doing stuff and, and then I was like started to clank dishes louder and louder because I was like, do you hear that somebody's in here doing this for you because I love you? If you loved me, you would get your butt off, off the couch and come and help me do the dishes, all right? So, and my attitude changed. And honestly, it went from the purity of like me just wanting to serve her to all of a sudden getting annoyed. And she did nothing different. And it was me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I realized that all of a sudden, my great event that was planned of like having everything done, I would literally take a box or a, a thing of laundry, of socks, because that was always last. Listen, fold towels first. It makes you feel like you're accomplishing something, right? And then work your way through. Like sweatshirts are great. Pull the big stuff out. Socks, bleh, right? Just go buy new ones, man. They're so cheap. Don't even fold them. So I would have this whole bin of socks, and I would go down, and by this time, I'm just ticked because dishes are done, she's watching a show, and I'd come in and go watch the show with her, and I literally would be like, clonk, like, oh, did you notice that there's socks here? You know what I mean? My attitude was horrible. It was so nasty, and honestly, it would end up in fights, and my heart went from like serving because I wanted to, because I really did, and I do love her, to all of a sudden, my attitude changed, not hers. But as my attitude changed, her attitude changed. Because she's sitting on the couch thinking, if you really love me, just come sit by me. If you really love me, I'm more important than socks. Why don't you just leave that and come sit by me? I didn't realize any of that was going down. I was too dumb to understand like, what was going down. But I'm, what I'm saying here is I understand this Mary Martha struggle very, very, very personally. And what happened was Martha's attitude got real junky. Real junkie. She was a great person. She was serving Jesus. How cool is that to have to be in the Bible? Like it's recorded. Like she had Jesus over for dinner. Like that is fantastic. She made a great list. And and but yet she was crusty. And I can only imagine that she was clanking dishes as people are just listening to Jesus. And Mary's just sitting at his feet, just listening to stories, just soaking it all up. And she begins to clank dishes. Does anyone hear that I'm cooking dessert in here? Clank, 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 clank. You know what I mean? Getting crusty, getting mad. And that's why first Peter verse four says this, above all, this is speaking of our relations, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. That's what grace is. We offer grace to others. We have received this. God views us through the lens of grace and sees us and covers over what we do with a multitude. Love covers over a multitude of sins. And it does say, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 
So here's the clinker, right? So here's, here's the really hard one to be able to grasp, especially for Martha. Martha is working hard. She's got sister drama. She's ticked at her sister. I mean, she's probably seething. She's showing it. She's not hiding it. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes in and he says this, Luke 10. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Now, I know Jesus is fantastic, but if I tried that with my wife, I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> I know you're upset about many things right now, but he didn't say it with a really weird voice and attitude. All right, so it was probably caring and loving. Like, you're upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. And I can only imagine that this conversation has happened in the kitchen, and she's like, clink. Did you seriously just say that? She probably wanted to whip that spatula across the room. Honestly, think about it. Like, she just, I, I, I mean, that's a gentle rebuke, right? That's a gentle rebuke, but she got told. She got told by Jesus, and here she is, man. I just fed you. I brought all your friends. You're stinky disciples. They haven't showered for days. My couch is not gonna come clean. I mean, they stink. Like, you know, they're all over the place. I fed you. Man, Peter spilled. He spilled right on the floor there. I'm gonna have to clean that up tomorrow. And you're sitting here telling me that Mary chose what's better. My sister chose what's better. And Jesus is like, yeah, yeah. She chose what is better. There is a lesson here. There's a valuable lesson because number one, she was distracted. Number two, she was crusty. Number three, here was the lesson. It was out of care because Mary was missing, I'm, I'm sorry, Martha was missing out. Verse 42 said, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. She's chosen what is better. She, she chose what is great so Martha was doing really good stuff, lots of good stuff. Like she was busy, busy, busy doing good stuff. And yet Mary chose what is better. She chose great. And if we understand, I preached a couple of weeks ago about the why behind the what on the rules and the regulations. This book, people look at it as like it's just a rule book that tells me how horrible I am. But no, when we change our lens and realize the why behind the what from the beginning of this book to the end is about relationship of a broken mankind a sinful mankind with a holy and righteous and almighty God who created the whole earth, the heavens and the earth and us in the first couple of chapters. And by chapter three, it was all messed up and sin was here. And the rest of the story is about a God trying to have a relationship with people through their sin and mistakes and trying to love them and trying to show them grace and trying to show them redemption all the way till you get to the end when we get to go be with him forever and ever, amen, just like I'll be preaching about next week. And so we look at this book of relationship, we look at the why behind what, the rules that I said were in place in this book are to protect our relationship with God and with each other. And when we look at this and we realize how caring it is to speak truth into our lives, how caring it is, see, Jesus spoke the truth in love. He spoke the truth in it, and I do believe that somehow he said it without it taking offense in Martha's heart. But he had to have a talk that said this, listen, you're working so hard, and I appreciate that. Listen, I'm so thankful for all that you're doing, but I gotta tell you this, you're missing out on just being with me, and I'm not gonna be here for a long time. And I would rather have time with you than time with everything else. She was missing out on this entire thing. The whole scripture is about relationship, and I want you to think about this simple thought. We were created to be his kids. We were created to be his kids. As parents, one of the things that we prioritize with kids is this, making sure that our kids get some sleep. Because we're better, our kids are better, and the world's a better place if our kids get some sleep, right? And, 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 and you look at this, and you know, are your kids an incredible joy to the world when they're tired? No, normally it's more apologetic. Like, I'm sorry, they're not normally like that. They're not normally so crabby. No, normally they'd go to you. Normally they wouldn't spit in your face. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it is, like, you know, and, 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 and we look at this, but I want you to understand this simple thought. We were created to be his kids. He wants to be with us. He longs to be with us, and he longs to give us rest. We can be missing out on the rest that he desires to give us. Matthew chapter 11 Jesus teaches this. He goes, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. I love that. I could just end there. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my uh, yoke, or I'm sorry, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There's a second layer of rest 
that comes when we do two things. When we come to him, we find rest. But when we learn from him and take the yoke upon us, that's when we find rest for our souls. And this is so powerful. If you can grasp this today when you leave, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wait, is that God saying that my problems aren't a big deal? No. Is that God minimizing the pain that I feel and what I'm walking through? Not at all. What he's saying is invite me into this. I'll carry it with you and for you. When we think of uh, a yoke and it's put on a couple of ox or a couple of animals that are doing horses or whatever, two oxes can pull 15,000 pounds instead of one being able to do 5,000. It's multiple times stronger when we pair up and that's just power. But I wanna go past power. I wanna talk to you about connection. Because it's more than just the power that happens. Because that's taken two ox that are about the same size or they're working together and they're multiple, multiple times stronger than they would be individually. And I want to give you this, like, this closing thought in, in your minds. It's not just about doing work for God. It's about doing work with God. There's a big difference. There's a lot of people that are busy doing work for God and they're missing out on doing work with God. What do I mean by that? How many of you have ever baked cookies with kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews? You've baked cookies with them, right? Okay, super clean, right? Super easy. <laughs> never a spill, never anything. Like it's just like, it's easy piece. Like it just rolls. Like, okay, when you choose to make cookies, uh, with kids, Christmas cookies, you're choosing to have an event that you will clean up for two days, okay? I mean, it's fun. You're not making that for cookies. You're making it with them so there's an experience. And so again, like, think about that. When that is happening and you're making cookies, you know that it's gonna be more work for you, the adult, you know that, man, if you're making cookies, there's going to be a couple eggshells that you're going to have to dig out. You know that there's probably going to be at least one cup of flour that misses the bowl, and somehow they sneeze at just the perfect time, and it goes in the toaster, and it goes in everything, and you're going to have to spray, you're, you're, you're going to have to power wash your kitchen by the time that this is done, but yet it's like so fun, and it's an experience. It's harder to do that with them, but it's a pretty special moment. On the flip side, some of you might have great experiences and memories of, of, of baking apple pies with grandma, baking cookies with somebody, doing something, like unbelievable experiences. And so, but it's harder to do that. I was thinking about when my kids were little. Because again, I look at this, there's a difference between doing something for someone and with someone. When I was little, my, our first daughter, Abby, who I talked about the one-year birthday party, she was just so easy. She was a blessing from above. She, I took her with everywhere because I wanted to. She was so great. She would just sit there, so sweet. I'd go to the store and she would just sit there. She'd stare at me. We would like talk while I went down. Never grabbed anything, never did anything. Just like so sweet. Do you want this? Yeah. She was, she was really great. And then we had a boy. Oh, dear God. We had a boy named Nathaniel that's watching most of your kids right now. I'm I, unbelievable. Okay, so this kid was like, talk about night and day difference. Oh, my word. I, instead of taking him with because I, I wanted to be like, Abby was just so sweet and so precious, I literally would take him with for my wife so that she could have a little break, right? Because everything I did with him was 10 times harder. I'm not even talking just a little bit harder, right? I mean, it was like, he was busy, and I'm telling you, I don't know how you can like have these straps and you should be able to like tie him in and like I should have bungee strapped him into these carts and it still didn't work. Kid was Houdini and he could get out and I would like turn around and it's like we'd be like going down to get spaghetti, right? And it's just like it wasn't just one. It'd be like a hand over the side like brrrr, spaghetti on the floor. I'd turn around, I'd start picking up all the spaghetti and he'd be leaning over grabbing something else and it was like, oh, it was tough. It was tough. I said it last night, the kids become like my best friend in the whole world, like it's so cool. But I'm telling you at that age, I took him with to be with him. I took him everywhere that I went. And, and you think about the experiences that come. Would it have been easier to do it by myself? Sure. Would a, would a 30 minute trip to the store to just get eight things be easier? 
Yes, it takes me 30 minutes to get eight things. That was not fake math. I don't know how it takes so long. <laughs> Some of you may see me in Walmart sometimes like this because I totally forget what I went for. All right, so. But I'm telling you, like, or an hour and a half trip that was an experience with my boy. And you know what? I wouldn't go back and trade any of those things. I got so many funny Nat stories that the kid, he broke everything I ever cared for, everything I ever owned. He cost me so much money. And, uh, and yeah, but I had dreams he'd pay me back. And then he's like, I want to be a kid's pastor. I'm like, oh, never getting that money back. <laughs> I don't know what in the world. I swear I've never said anything like that. That was just like, that was gut talk right there. But I'm, I'm never getting a fat dime back from that kid. Because I had a running tally of hundreds of thousands of dollars with interest that he's cost me. But uh, what in the world was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about, <laughs> I, was, I was talking about doing things not just for God, but with God. And it's those experiences. And can you understand what a significant thing it is to do something with someone? To, to do these things with God. So take it to your walk with the Lord. Listen, when we understand that he doesn't just want to yoke up with us because he needs our help. He doesn't say, man, your problem's really big. And you know what? Um, I kind of need you to pull some weight here because this one's a little too big for me. Do you realize that when we yoke up, we're not just yoking up with someone with the same size shoulders. We're like linking up with the God of this universe. That, that like legit is just saying this. Listen, if you just come to me, um, we'll work this all out together. And he doesn't just say, I'll carry the load with you. He says, I'll carry the load for you. And all you gotta do is just sync up with me. All you gotta do is slow down enough and get in step with me. And when you do that, when you come to me, I'll give you rest. And, and when you take my yoke upon you and when you learn from me, listen, we'll walk through this. But understand, when we are in sync, when we are walking in sync together, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. And I had this thought process in my head, I, I, again, thinking through all of this stuff. This uh, thing over here that's underneath this keyboard is so heavy. I, I don't, I think when we went to Menards to buy the wood for that, we said, is there any wood that is heavier than concrete? Because that's what we would like to have. We would like to have something that we move for walk through Christmas and in the woods and we carry in and out, we move for everything. We would love to have three of those things that are so heavy that it takes four people to carry and it's still painful. I hate that thing. I hate it. <laughs> so I thought of that. I was like, dude, no, okay, all right, but... It's heavy, and I've carried that with so many different people, so many different places, and this is one thing that I found. When you're carrying stuff like that, it's like sometimes the people carrying it can be working against each other. Have you ever had that happen? And you're literally like, dude, just put it down. I could push it better than with your help because you're hurting me right now. You're twisting, you're contorting, and it's like when you're not moving in that same direction, you can actually be fighting against each other. And even though you got some help, you're not really using that help to its full capacity. And I just had that vision in my mind this week as I was thinking a, 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 about that, of how often we can miss that. And maybe your burden is heavy, not because it's not heavy, but maybe you're not quite allowing the Lord to carry it for you and with you. Maybe you're wrestling. Maybe you're trying to get ahead of that yoke a little bit. Maybe you're dragging behind that yoke a little bit. And there's something beautiful about when we get in step. When we get in step and we get in rhythm. And when that happens, things just click differently. It doesn't mean your problems changed. It doesn't mean the weight and the hurt in your heart changed. What it means is he's carrying it with you. And he's carrying it for you. Would you stand with me this morning? So this week, when I went to that prayer and fasting retreat, here's some true confessions of a pastor. I went in and felt really overwhelmed with some stuff that I got to get done. And so I knew that I was going away. I knew that I'd be out of the office. I knew that I'd be away from home for a few days, and I knew that I would have some time. And so I packed up my briefcase, 
and I had a to-do list that was longer than usual. And it was like, you know what? I'm gonna go up and, and, and me and God, we're gonna work together, right? I just preached about doing this stuff with God. I feel like a lot of what I do is with God. And me and him, we're gonna work, work, work. I, I was like, I gotta write my message because the end of the week's busy. And so I'll, I'll go up there. What better time than at a prayer and fasting retreat to just write a message, get a lot of stuff done. I got, I got all kinds of emails to try to clear out. I got this and that. I, I, and, and so... I went up there, and in, in the opening service on Monday evening, it wasn't a whole sermon, but there were about 250 ministers there, and, um, and the person just said, you know what, some of you, some of you came up here, and you are a Martha, and you need to just realize you need to just be a Mary. And that was like, just hit me in there. I came up with an agenda, man. I was packed. I, I could have stayed there till Thursday and probably not get out everything done. And I was like, when am I going to do my message? When am I going to do this? And, and literally the hardest part of that whole time was just trying to shut that off and trying to say, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to be. And when I came back from that after being obedient, it was horrible. It was hard. And when I came back on Wednesday afternoon, I literally wrote this entire sermon in about 90 minutes. Normally it takes me like five hours, six hours. 90 minutes, just, it just like flowed. This was like straight from my heart to God because I just stopped and I just received and I just abided and I came back and something was different in me. And I just want to challenge you, don't miss out because Martha missed out. Martha had a lot going on, a lot of important stuff. But yet she, she could have missed out. And so Psalm chapter 127, I'm skipping John 15, the last verse in here, Psalm 127 says this, unless the Lord builds the house, the work of the builders is wasted. And unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. It's useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late night, anxiously working for food to eat. Listen to this, for God gives rest to his loved ones. And today I believe that there's some of you in this place that you may feel distracted. You may feel distracted. And it's even with good stuff. You got a whole bunch of stuff you're trying to get done. You got a whole bunch of stuff that you need to get done. It doesn't go away. Nothing, nothing on my list magically just went away. God just helped me do it and I believe he helped me more effectively do it later in the week. And a lot of the other stuff, I just pushed off to the next week. And then next week when I don't get it done, I'll push it off to the next week, you know? I was like, God, this is gonna be my week to get it all done. And then it kind of hit a point where it's just like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Some of us are so stressed out over stuff that really doesn't matter, and we are distracted. So maybe you're distracted today. And I know for me, I've been there before, maybe you're crusty. Maybe you're crusty. I have to fight that. I have to continually fight that and go back to the source and say, God, would you soften my heart? Because this world that we live on, like I talked about last week, it stomps on grace. And it stomps on the things that are most valuable to us. And it is super easy to get really crusty. And that's why I believe David said, you know, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit in me. Some of you today, you just need to say, Lord, maybe I've been distracted and today I'm just gonna dial in, I'm gonna focus on you. And some of you are saying, Lord, maybe I'm crusty and distracted because Martha was both. And I've allowed my attitude to shift where instead of serving you, even though I'm still doing these things for you, Something's shifted in my heart. I don't find joy. In fact, I'm a little frustrated right now. I'm a little angry. I'm a little crusty. We all get there. And what do you do? The answer for all of these is the same. You go back to the source and you plug in and you abide. Or maybe you're here. And God wants you to learn what it is to work with him. And you need to get in step with him. You're trying to carry a heavy load just like you're carrying that thing over there, that platform, and it's heavy and it twists and it contorts and it's kind of hard and sometimes it feels like you're fighting in opposition and God's just saying, listen, if you just learn the rhythm, if you just learn my rhythm, take my yoke upon you, learn from me because guess what? If you just realize my rhythm, 
It's smooth. And we'll walk through this. And again, it doesn't negate the heavy. Life is heavy. Challenges are heavy. Loss is heavy. These things are real. It doesn't say that. What he says is this. He promises us, I'll meet you in that when you yoke up with me. And I'll carry it for you. And I'll not only give you rest, but man, if you learn from me and catch my rhythm, I'll give you rest for your soul. Because my burden is easy. My yoke is light. Heavenly Father, I pray that this morning, whatever of those things people are facing or walking through today, that you'd meet us in this place. I pray if we are distracted that we would be able to put those distractions aside and say, Lord, I seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. Lord, I, I, I pray that over people that are distractions even with good things, Lord God. Lord, wouldn't keep us away from missing what's great. I pray that if our hearts are crusty, that just being in your presence in a moment's time can speak life like nothing else, that you would restore to us the joy of our salvation, that you would renew our spirit in you. Lord, I pray for those in this place, they may be missing out because they're busy working for God instead of working with God. I pray, God, that we would sync up with you and that through that you would lighten that load, that we would find a rhythm of life that includes, that includes you and that we would beat, Lord God, to the rhythm of your drum and that we would step and walk through in sync to the things that you do. In Jesus' name. Last night we didn't do this, but I asked Ben if he would just lead us in just literally this couple minute song before we walk out. Just a nice light acoustic version. You might know it or not. Some of you might just need to close your eyes for a moment and just soak in the presence of the Lord. Others of you might know it. You might sing with. It might be your response of worship. But honestly, talk about a prayer of our hearts before because I know this. When we walk in five minutes out that door, life hits again and you'll be busy. Don't miss the moments. Jesus is in the house, and he's here to meet with you this morning. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see
nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else. pray as you, with you as you head out. We have prayer teams on both sides and communion available after every service. And I just felt like I needed to share this and um, just kind of got dropped in my heart and it's going to be a closing prayer of response. But um, I've had uh, just a, a weight of something on my heart for the last couple of weeks. And um, it's like every, every night at about the five hour mark, I wake up and I start thinking about it and I start getting stressed. And uh, sometimes I can make myself go back to bed and there's been many times when I'm, I've just gotten up. And uh, this morning I came over here early and was just in this place by myself. And the reason why I share that is because don't, don't think that taking the yoke doesn't mean that there's not stuff that all of us face that's real. And um, but you know, this morning when I was praying, and I didn't even come over seeking that thing, it's what woke me up, but I was over here, and I was just walking in here, and I was praying, and all of a sudden, I can't express to you the, the burden that lifted off my shoulders, and it's because of this, because literally as I was thinking about it, God just told me this, it's going to be okay. That was it. He didn't give me a plan. He didn't tell me what's next. He didn't tell me how I should handle it. He just whispered in my spirit. I wish that I could say it was this audible voice that spoke down from heaven. It wasn't. But I literally was walking around this place, and it was right over there that I just literally felt this. In a moment's time, all of a sudden, I realized I, I'm not, I, the anxiety that I have about this is lifted. And I just literally felt that because all the voice of the Lord spoke to my heart in my situation was this, it's gonna be okay. And some of you, that's all you need to hear. You need to know this, you're not walking it alone, you're not walking through what you're walking through alone. He sees it, he knows it, he's got answers, he's got plans, and all you need to do is just sit back and trust. And I can't even tell you the lightness in my step that I felt when for a few weeks as I carried a burden that I don't even think that I needed to carry. And all of a sudden, that heaviness was gone because God just said, you know what, give it to me. And I got in step with him. So again, I wish that I could say that's the way it always is, man, and your pastor's so great, he's always doing this. No, no, no. I felt that weight, and it lifted. And, and the reason I tell you that is an encouragement, that that's for you. It's there. How many of you, honestly, just as I close in prayer and send you out of here, how many of you would say, you know what, I need to hear that. I need that. I need the voice of heaven just to speak to me. Man, how good is God? You want to know what's funny? Is when I felt that release right over there, by the time I walked, because I was kind of circling this place, just praying, by the time I walked up past those windows, my prayers changed, and all of a sudden I was like, God, you are so good. You've always been good. You're so good to me, even when I don't deserve it. You're always so good to me. And it's crazy how my countenance changed in one moment. So, Lord, I pray many lifted their hands. They need that from you today. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit in a moment's time can do what we work at for weeks and months and even a lifetime. And I thank you for your faithfulness and I thank you for your goodness. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to each heart. And that literally the heaviness that people are walking through, there's struggles, there's difficulties, there's hurt, there's loss, is real. But in a moment's time, Lord, you just say, it's going to be okay. You didn't tell me the problem was going to be fixed. You didn't tell me that it was going to go away. You didn't tell me that it was going to change. What you told me was, it's going to be okay, and that's good enough. That's all I needed. 
Lord, may we hear that and receive that from you. Thank you for this time we got to bask and spend in your presence in this holy place this morning. Now may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. Make his light to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Have a great rest of your weekend.